pick up our study in Second Epistle of John. We've looked at John himself. We've looked at uh, the book as we began to study, as we did an outline, and we actually got into the verses. And let's pick up verse one: the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. And not only I, and not I only, but also they that have known the truth. Okay, let's continue our study. As last week we looked at the elder. We saw it as John, <coughs> excuse me, age, position, and his relationship closer to Jesus Christ. I advise you to go back and pick up the previous studies on YouTube and Sermon uh, Network to audio or to watch the video. As we continue, we are again going to say that this study is written for the beginning Christian. The, the Christian has just got saved, who is learning, who's grown, and maybe young. There's a lot of meat that we need to really be careful with as we're dealing with young Christians because young Christians are still in the mill. They haven't gone up to solid food. What I'm trying to do is make it easy and help them digest what the Word of God says. In Second John the Epistle, we come across many, many doctrinal. It's just a book of 13 verses, one chapter. But the food that is in this this book here is marvelous. It's a wonder. It needs to be studied. And it needs to be studied in the thing that we're not going to rush this. If the Lord came back before we finish this, and he can finish it. All right, so we did the elder unto the elect lady. So we got two verse, two words in the verse done. And we're going to unto now unto the elect lady, and we're going to stop there. Because we're going to come across a term, elect. And it is cause of confusion in the midst of Calvinism. C-A-L-V-I-N-I-S-M. Calvinism. A commentary is of no importance if you walk away deprived of God's knowledge. For it says in 2 Timothy 2.15, 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, I'm sorry for Calvin. He did not rightly divide. So, study we will in Second John, as it's come up, the word election. We must walk with God and not per man. God's ways are righteous, and the man's way is but religious. I'll give you some verses on that that we're not going to look at, but God's way is righteous, man's way is religious. Proverbs 5.21, Proverbs 14.12, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 16.2 and 25. Simple, simple is 1 Peter 1, 2. Elect according to, now here's the word, the foreknowledge of God the Father. Election plus foreknowledge equals an important to understand election. When dealing with election, God in the scriptures, it is always equal with what God already knew or knows what an individual will do. See, we don't know what tomorrow holds. God does. 
God knows what's going to happen a year from now, a month from now. We don't have that knowledge. God knows our actions and our reactions before we even have something to react or have an action to. Yes, we have free will. God gives us that free will, but he already knows what we're going to do before we do it. He does not step in and make us do. He just knows what we're going to do. It's not compelling an individual to do what God wants. But God given an individual free will to choose, God at present knowing what the individual will do before they act. God acts upon his foreknowledge. God allows man to make choices, but he already knows what the choices man will make. It's perplexing, but God already knows. It's hard to understand with our infinite, dumb, stupid minds that come up with an automobile or a computer or a cell phone where God has come up with everything. Listen, if God didn't make it, it's not here. And it's not ever going to be made. And to realize that God not only is active in 10.45 a.m., on July 12, 2013, but he's active uh, on 1045 July 13, 2013, uh, August 13, 2013, 1045 a.m., uh, July 12, 2013, 1045 a.m., oh, actually 2014, God knows. And I don't even know what I'm going to do after if I even finish this. I could have a heart attack right now and die right in the middle of this, this broadcast, this, this taping, and you'll get live action of a dead man that's gone to heaven. But God knows already what's going to happen tonight. Whether I'm going to be alive or whether I'm dead and going home. Now, another word besides foreknowledge is you need to learn the word corporate. Election is always corporate and certainly not an indiv individual. We'll look at a couple exceptions, but the exceptions are, are exceptional. Because the individual we're going to talk about is no ordinary individual. Jesus is the lone exclusion. And I said that's an individual above all individuals. There is no individual like Jesus. And there will never be. You say, well, in glory we'll be like Christ. And in glory we'll have, you know, yeah, but in glory Jesus Christ who paid for our sins also has holes in his hands, in his feet, and in his side that we will not. He carries the wounds off into eternity. He's an individual above all individuals. And you must get it that you must get foreknowledge and corporate. You must get those. If you don't, you, you lose track of what election is and you're going to pervert yourself and you're going to pervert others. The corporate or the election takes place in time. The time is grounded upon the foreknowledge of God. God knows everything. <clears throat> Long before man shows up on the earth, God already knew man would fall. You say, well, why did free will? See, God knew Adam was going to take that fruit. And he said, okay, that's your free will. Do it. You'll suffer the consequences. I warned you. But I'm not going to stop you from doing it. Now, had Adam and Eve called upon God, God would have stepped in and would have helped them out, and things would have been a lot different. 
I'm a Christian. I'm dying of lung cancer from smoking cigarettes. Hey, listen. God gave you a free will. He had the, the Surgeon General put on those cigarettes. You know, it's dangerous to your health. You want to keep on doing the stupid thing, then keep on doing the stupid thing. God gave you a free will. Now, if you were to step in and ask God to help you, God would step in and help you. Well, all right, you're not really serious. You can't tell me that God's going to fail. Long before man shows up in the earth, God already knew men would fall. God already knew it. Just simple. God already knew. Explain it. It's hard. Now, God knew. What did he know? What did God know? Well, first of all, for Israel, you take your Bible and go to Isaiah 45. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 4. Isaiah 45, verse 4, it says, For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect. There's that word that we saw in the second epistle of John. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. Jacob became Israel. God changed his name. Though thou hast not known me. God called out one man, Abraham. He called out his son, Isaac. He called out Jacob. Who later on, because, because of what he was, because of what Abraham does, he was Abram. He became Abraham. So he would not be associated with Ishmael. See, when Ishmael says, we are of the father Abraham, you are a liar. You don't know scripture. Go sit in the corner with a big fat dunce cap on your head. Abraham did not give birth to Ishmael. Abram gave birth to Ishmael. And with all the foolishness and folly that Jacob had in his life, God said, you know what? i got to rename you. I've got to give you a new name. Because that Jacob just does not go along with me. And he called him Israel. So he saw that Israel had a need. Before Israel even was Israel. Before even Abraham's great, 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 great grandparents were around. God already knew, even before Adam and Eve. God already knew the children of Israel would have a need. Well, what about us? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. And when I mean us, I mean the church. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he has chosen us, the church, in him before the foundation of the world. See the before the foundation of the world, that is foreknowledge. Before God created this earth, he said there's going to be a body called church. And they're going to have a need. Corporate. Remember that word we looked at? Remember the word foreknowledge? Those two important words you gotta get. We as a church are a corporate one body. Four knowledge is before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Well, isn't that interesting? You know, there are people out there before they have a baby, they, they give a savings account. They've already decided what college that kid's going to go in, what kind of car they're going, even some families around the world, even who that child's going to marry. But yet that child could die in a womb. That child could be a stillborn. That child could die at two years old. You don't know. But God already knows and says way before time was ever to be, eternally uh, before time, sun, moon, and all that, the season, God said there's going to be two groups of people, two corporate groups that are going to have a need even before they are even thought of. One more place for the church is Titus. Chapter 1, 
verse 1. Titus 1, 1. If you see me making notes here, I'm making notes for the time that I can put these references on the screen so you know and can't be without excuse. Because I don't want to give you an excuse before God because God doesn't take excuses that I'm going to give you the, the references. But here we go. Titus 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the knowledge and acknowledging of the truth, which is in which is after godliness are you a born again christian you are elect believe it on the lord jesus christ and we'll get into more and more this may even take two tapes to four no webster's 1828 dictionary i don't go to the hebrew and greek I go to Webster's Original Dictionary, 1828, because you know what? He put scripture in there. Imagine a dictionary with the King James verses in there. The entry for foreknow. It's a VT, verb something. I don't know that stuff. See, no. So if you're going to look up the word foreknow, the, the dictionary tells you to go look up the word no. K-N-O-W. To have a previous knowledge of to foresee. God already knew there would be Israel. God would already know there was a church before there was even dirt to make man. Acts 2.23 Acts 2.23 It says, Him being delivered by the determined counsel. Well, let's go verse 22. Ye men of Israel. Ah, Acts 2 talks about Jews, not the church. Sorry. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him, Jesus Christ, being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. What is that? God already knew, Jesus Christ already knew that they would whip his back, put a crown of thorns on him, and give him a cross instead of a throne. God already knew that. But what is more important? That God and Jesus Christ, <coughs> excuse me for problem, already knew man would need a savior. The way then had to be organized before the foundation of the world, before man that had even fell, before man was created, pre-Genesis 1-1. You talk about the gap theory between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. What about what we just read pre-Genesis 1-1 before the foundation of the world? That's before Genesis 1 1. For Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created a heaven and a foundation in the earth. So we're going in a place even before the Bible. Just before, I mean, just after Isaiah chapter 14 when Lucifer falls. We are looking at something. And even maybe even before Isaiah 14, maybe even before God created Satan, he already talked to Jesus. Son, we're going to make a being. He's going to, uh, he's going to commit iniquity. He's going to fall. He's going to 
go about these men that we we are going to create. He's going to mess them up. So we know when salvation was established. You say on Calvary's cross, you are wrong. That's when it happened. Have you ever wanted something and you had to save up money for it? And you, you well, it cost this amount. All right? The cost this amount that what I want is pre Genesis 1 1. Saving up your nickels and dimes and, and dollars is the Old Testament. And when you actually walk into the place where you're going to buy it, it is the footsteps as Jesus is heading to Calvary. And when you purchase, when you, did you hear me? When you purchase, is when you is when Christ went on that cross and died for our sins. And when you walk out of that place of establishment where you bought the thing, you got what I said, the stone rolled away. When he walked out of the grave, it's yours. God and Jesus Christ had already thought about our salvation long before we were even thought of. It was before we were created, before you and I ever knew we had a need, before our grandparents, Adam and Eve, were created. Isn't that a wonderful God? Imagine a God already knowing what we're going to need and provides that need. Before us. <laughs> Can you say before we need it because it's even before us? God set up a plan of salvation which man could obtain or reject. The free will of salvation for you to receive Christ or not receive Christ was long, long, long time ago before Genesis 1. Now let me ask you a question, and I'm going to add this, and we'll get back in this real quick. God knew long before even anything happened, because he has a foreknowledge, if you were going to do his will or not. He told us, go you know all the world. He already knew what you would do, free will. Before our time, a routine was set up by the American presidency. The leaders of this country foresaw a leader was be anticipated and propose the design of the election of the president. There were men that sat down and said that this nation is going to need a leader. Now we got to figure out how do we put a leader into office? What do we do? Because what we do today will go on to 2013. Today we vote on a candidate which runs for office. The rules or the way was previously set before this candidate was even born. When President Obama put himself into the presidential race the second time or even the first time, there were rules and regulations set up on his being set up to be put into office. The election was set up long before his great-great-great-great-grandfather. There are rules and regulations that he would have to follow. Did you get what I said? God set up rules and regulations that we have to follow. You can't say, oh, it's by works, baptism, or anything else. It's by the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Long before that candidate was ever born, men of America seen and wanted the needs of the people to choose a leader before a leader was present. And those rules set up today is how we vote for people in office. Election. That's what we call it. Election was set up for men that foresee the future. Now, they couldn't see, foresee like God, but they knew America was going to be a little bit more further. God saw it saw to it, man would have the way of salvation. Again, imagine God seeing that we have a need and not doing anything for it. 
The man would come to be a sinner. Genesis chapter 3. And thus his future looked destined by the, way, by the way of the lake of fire. Jesus said in Matthew 25 that, uh, he, that uh, hell was made for the devil and his angels. God never wanted man to go to hell. That was made for Lucifer. That was made for Satan and the angels that followed him. Why would God put a man in hell? That's not what his intentions, Matthew 25. That was Satan's domain. But man went the way of Satan. God warned him in, in Genesis 2. Do not take that fruit and do not eat it. But God already knew that Eve and Adam would have a little picnic. And because of the picnic that God already knew before the picnic basket was ever made, I've got to come up with a way because those idiots won't listen to me. And yes, we humans are idiots because we don't listen to God, and I put myself in it, thank you very much. Because I don't listen to God all the time. Now, man's root was hell, judgment, gnashing of teeth, Darkness and absence from God, his creator. God saw that before he created man. How much love did God have for man? He knew he was going to fall. He knew he was going to go to hell. And still he stepped in. Why did God then allow man to fall? Why did God permit sin? Simple. I know the answer to that. Free will of man. God gives every man a choice to do right or to do wrong. God forces nobody. In Romans 8, 29, it says... For whom he did foreknow. There's that word again. He also did predestinate. Oh, there's another boo-boo word. To be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Foreknow and predestinate. Foreknowledge is a requisite. For whom did he did foreknow us, the vile sinners that we are, he did pre, pre, uh, predestinate to be conformed to the image of it. What did God want to do in the beginning before there was man? He wanted every man to be saved. He, excuse me. <coughs> he wanted every man to be like his son Jesus Christ. Why, why don't dogs go to heaven? Because dogs that go to heaven won't look like Jesus Christ. Why don't giraffes go to heaven when they die? Because giraffes would not look like Jesus Christ. Because only man was made in the image of God. Now, John Calvin believed that God controlled or sealed a man deprived of a choice. He would be saved and spend eternity in hell. Amen. Glory to God. He would be damned to spend eternity in hell. Well, that's not good. Well, don't you do that on the streets when you preach and you hand people gospel track? You would, uh, you know, have people be saved and go to heaven, and there'll be some people who are damned to go to hell. Yeah, but let's let's see what John Calvin taught. John Calvin and Cal Calvinism accept it as true that man has no free will. That God said from the beginning, Fred, you are saved and nothing you can or cannot do will change that. You are saved nevertheless, Fred. Amen. 
Fred couldn't lose it, would not lose it, uh, could ever, by Calvinistic view, if God said, Fred, you are saved. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? But <laughs> here's the dirty part of Calvinism. Now, it's the fact is that, you know, God says you're, I mean, that's a robot, but, but Dave, you're lost. We know a lot of lost people. And nothing you can do or cannot do will change that. You are lost nevertheless. What kind of God is that? Fred is saved, but Dave is going to hell. David comes up to, to God and said, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I am a sinner. I need to go to heaven. God says, no, according to Calvinism. But I trust the shed blood of Jesus. No. God, your son. No. But God, no. I said no because you're going to hell because I said you're going to hell. But Fre Fred, I said he can go to heaven. But no buts about it. What kind of father is that? God is our father. Imagine that prodigal son coming home. Father is, no, get out of here, you filthy pig swine idiot. Father, I, no. But that's not the story of the prodigal son. That father was out there looking for the son to come. God is looking for us to come. Embarrassment, you mean Fred has all the hope the, and Dave is hopeless? That is Calvinism in a nutshell. That disregards the true election of God. Now, you see what the election of John Calvin? I elected Fred. I am not going to elect Dave. Don't you see where now that goes against the Christian church doctrine? Where if Dave were to come up with the blood of Jesus Christ and only by God's Son, and God says, hey, okay, that's what I like. What if Fred spent his life with harlots and worshipping Baal and worshipping and, and false gods and all that and drank and smoked and, and God's going to turn around and tell Fred, you're safe no matter what? You know what Calvinism teach? You ready for this? And I believe this is in a lot of churches, not as far as the doctrinal thing, but a lot of churches must teach us because what I'm going to say is they don't do it. Calvinism teaches you don't have to go and tell all the world about Jesus Christ. It's a lazy man's religion. You say, what do you mean? If you're a Calvinist, you don't have to witness the people. God already predestined for him to be saved and him to go to hell. So why go hand out gospel tracts? Why go tell people about Jesus? And yet, a lot of you Bible-believing Baptists out there, you won't do the same thing either. You must believe what Calvin is. You don't go witness. You don't go pass out tracts. Well, what are you thinking? Now, God has two plans of election. A. Jews. They are and will always be God's people. Amen. That ends that. No other discussion. They're God's people. Right now, they're bad little boys, and God is scolding them. God's got the rod out on them, and they're, they're away in the pigs, eating husk of the pigs until they come back to their father. Okay? I'm not going to fight you in that. I believe the Jews are God's people. I pray for them. You don't mess with them. I pray for missionaries. I don't even know if God knows who they are. And they're dealing with Jews in Israel or wherever. The firstborn of Abraham. Get that. I saw a time like thing. Abraham, the father of Isaac and Ishmael. Time like you are a liar. Read your Bible. Liar, liar. They're a liar. Ishmael was of Abram. Abraham, Isaac, his son, and Jacob, 
his son, and the twelve tribes, his son, sons of Jacob. Now, number one, does that make you innocent and secure? No. It does not. Election number two puts you into a name, the name being Abraham. If you were not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you were not God's people. You say, well, what about naming this, the, the Syrian there that came to God and worshipped God? He was different. But he was not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the twelve tribes. You study your Bible, there's something with the Gentiles, we're not going to get in that study now, but there's something in the Gentiles later on in eternity. The new heavens, where the Jews will get the new earth, because they're, they're guaranteed the earth, Genesis chapter 12, and you pass on to Abraham, pass on to Jacob, the land is theirs. No matter who the united nuts believe. And the new Jerusalem is the Christians. You were elected by being from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But any children had an option to rebel against God at any time. Can you name me one person in, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the 12 tribes of Israel that rebelled against God? And God, you know, when they died, they went to hell. They had an opportunity, a free will to do at what at that time that God told them what to do. There was a time where they were supposed to be circumcised. There was a time they were supposed to obey the law. There was, you know, like God told Adam and Eve, or at least told Adam, don't take that, that fruit. See, when you look at this, God gives us a, a revelation of what not to do or what to do, and we have a reaction, yea or nay. And there were people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that did not obey what God told them to do. Some chose their own way. The seed of Jacob, and I want to do right or I want to do wrong. So you see, even in, in Abraham family, you had a free will to do what you wanted to do, right or wrong. Adam had a free will to do right or wrong. Now listen, before we do another thing, talk about, keep talking about Adam. The Lord laid this on my heart. What if according to Calvin... No, I'm not gonna say. Let's let's go on. Number the next point for the Jew is the law. They were to be of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes. Now comes something new. Now, see, just being of the family of the family of the family didn't work. Jacob proved it. His boys proved him. One of his boys slept with, with, Jay, with, with his, his father's wives. Listen, that happened in the, in, the, in the Corinth church. Nothing new under the sun. So God said, okay, that didn't work. I tried telling man not to do it. That idiot went and did it. All right, I chose me a man. Why did you do that? Now i got to change your name. I wish you would listen to me this time. All right, finally, you have a boy named Isaac. You're going to name him Laughter because you laughed at me. Isaac. Oh, I just love Esau. He comes home with the greatest deer meat ever. Mm -hmm. ah. Rebecca. Oh, Jacob, you just so sweet. You stay home and you take care of everything. What are you guys doing this favoritism for? That's my boy. It's my boy. Oh, I hate Esau, God said. Yeah, but Lord, he makes some great meat. I tell you that, man, he's just a great hunter. But I hate him. You're having fellowship with somebody that I hate. 
Jacob, we won't even get into Jacob. That boy did everything under the sun, and but God still loved him. Now we got to have a law. I am going to have, this is God speaking, I'm going to have to tell you guys, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, Jews, I'm going to have to tell you now what to do specifically. Okay? I can't rely on you to do right without knowing what's right. Okay? One, the Jews had to obey the law, all of the law. They were in the wilderness, and the Jews, who were not approved by God, died and went to hell, according to 1 Corinthians 10, 5. You say they're God's elect? Yeah. And there are some that still went to hell. You better thank God we're in, we're in the age of grace. God chose them, but guess what? They didn't choose God. You see where we're going with this? You could have obeyed or disobeyed the law. It was your choice. And by the way, James says, if you offended in one point of law, you were guilty of all. You couldn't pick and choose what you wanted to do. It was a stiff, firm, unmovable point of time and when you failed an animal had to die oh boy glad Peter wasn't there you know Peter please eat tasty animals yeah I'm making fun of him because God said we can eat as long as I can bow my head thank the Lord say hey man glory to God thank you for this roast beef sandwich Woo -wee. I'm gonna have roast beef So part two of this, election puts you in by obedience. And there was an event for strangers that could enter in. Even though they weren't of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. But it was rigid. It was, it was stiff. Election was chosen by them that chose to obey the law. Oh, so you mean election is based upon obedience. Now, when we put a president into office, there are also laws and rules and regulations that Americans don't know nothing about today. That if that president does not do what he's supposed to do, or does not fit the qualifications that we learn later on, that, that he, you have the right to say, okay, you're out of office. Impeachment. But Americans don't know that. You can stand up there and say, I'm of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, listen, that's what the Pharisees told Jesus. And they died, most of them died and went to hell. God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but not only that, God says, I, I chose you, but I want you to be obedient. I want you, your free will, to obey what I say. David done right, and God chose him. Got it? King Saul chose to do wrong, and God put an end to his kingdom. David obeyed the law, and Saul did not. And we're going to close right there. I mean, there's just so much about election. We're going to talk about part two election next, next time, Lord willing. But I want you to get these important words before we go. Foreknowledge. God already knew. It's corporate, except for Jesus Christ, who is the ind individual of all individuals. And the predestinate. You mess up on those words, and you mess up on this doctrine. Plain and simple.
It's very important. And it's very simple. It's a very simple, simple doctrine that anybody can understand. Once you sit down and go as far as the point of view of the Bible and not man. As we close now.